Hi there, it's Anne here on the Life LDC Couch. Uh, thanks for joining me. It's uh, the end of April. It is the 29th of April, and this is my April update. Phew, just about had a disaster there. Daisy went that away, and my camera cord was in her way, and she uh, decided to keep on trucking, and I just caught my camera and microphone as it was sort of falling over, so disaster avoided. So let's start again. Hi, this is Anne here at uh, Life LDC and I'm really glad you've taken the time to join me here on the Life LDC couch for my April knit update. Uh, April has been a, a busy month for me uh, focusing just on my Bondi Barton uh, mashup. It's the Martin Story uh, hoodie design from the Ocean Blue collection in uh, Denim Revive. Ouch, Daisy. <laughs> She's busy chewing on me here. She's saying, yes, mummy. So I'm just looking at my notes here to say uh, that I'm here to represent the mature knitter that is a, of an age that has uh, the attitude. We want stylish knits. We want classic details. We prefer commercially available yarns because we like to knit, um, we want sweaters quantities and we don't have to worry about, you know, is it going to match? When I first really got back into knitting, which was probably 30 years ago, I was in my early 30s and uh, knitting shops held regular knitting classes, learn how to learn things. One of the best things I learned was how to finish and I will I can never thank my local star yarn store owner, Julia Needle Emporium. I took her how to finish. I learned how to pick up for button bands. I learned how to do shoulders decreases. I learned how to pick up around the neckline. And that has uh, been, that knowledge has been used all these years to be able to finish my sweaters the way I want them to be finished and it makes me proud to wear them. So if you get a chance to support your local yarn store by going to a workshop, please do so. Rowan Yarns is having another knit along. It's another blanket. This time it's a blanket and or cushion uh, combination designed by Martin Story in the Pure Wool Worsted. I've done a, a blog post on it with the details. I will link that blog post below and I'll insert some pictures here as I'm talking about what the, the cushions look like and the, and the blanket. It's a single color uh, pro project this time, which I think is great. You can pick one of the colors in your, if you did one of the previous Martin Story um, blankets. I'll link those, the links to those patterns below. They were both multicolored ones. Uh, so this one's uh, solid color and you could put beads on it if you want. Beads or no beads. I think beads sounds like a great idea. Just think it would give it a, the weight, you know, how weighted blankets are all the rage now for helping you relax. This would be like the most luxurious weighted blanket that you could possibly have. An interesting uh, video came across my YouTube feed and it was from the River City Yarns gals there out in Edmonton. They were out in Seattle at a meeting that debuted the Rowan Autumn Winter 2019-20 season and I'd heard rumbles about these meetings. Yarn store owners, Rowan stockists were invited to come and meet with Rowan representatives and see the new uh, the new designs and yarns for this coming fall. Wouldn't you have just loved to be a uh, fly on the wall and listen to, to what was going on and see what was going on? Well, 
Well, if you're watching on um, Instagram, the H and H Cologne uh, trade show feed, there was a few little snippets of things that were happening there, but not too much. Uh, almost everybody who goes to those things knows that the new season stuff, you know, people, the companies want to keep it pretty quiet. So anyway, if you watch, I'll, again, I'll link this below. All these, everything I talk about, I will link below. The River City Yarns ladies met with Sharon Brandt, Trish Malcolm, who's just recently joined the, the rowing uh, team, and Martin Story after the previews that they, they saw for a little interview. And, and uh, you'll see that Martin talks about his, um, this new knit along. And the question comes up, uh, if someone wanted to knit it at a lighter yarn rather than the pure wool worsted, what would they use? Cutting a long story short, of course you can use a DK weight, but you'd have to have um, more squares. I, I would just like to point out, pure wool worsted is a superwash yarn, and it's perfect for afghans, and, and you know, that is great. When I first saw this blanket, I thought to myself, gosh, we are talking like an heirloom blanket here the, with the beads and everything. I would love to personally, I'm thinking, gee, I wonder what it would be like in felted tweed or what would it be like in the hemp tweed? Um, you know, it, it would be a significant investment, uh, but you know, it depends on what you're looking for. Um, while I don't have any children to jump on blankets or anything, I do have two dogs. So that if I did it in one of those yarns, it would not be the kind of thing that would be around because people are always sitting on blankets in this house. Uh, or you, you put your, your knitting down for one second and someone's sleeping on it. This just happened. I'll put a picture in here. This has just happened this afternoon while I was getting ready to do this video. I put my Bondi down on the couch and when I, I went to get the buttons because I was sewing buttons on and there's Lackey sound asleep on my Bondi uh, and he had the nerve to look at me quite disgruntled that I was daring to move it so anyway so I'm thinking about number one I'm thinking about do I want to take on another blanket do I want to just do a cushion do I want to do it in pure wool worsted do I want to do it in another yarn do I want to to um, do the math, do I want to make more squares? Do you know? I'm I'm just thinking. I'm not sure. But anyway, I will link to my blog post below, and I just wanted to point out there, I've recently become an affiliate uh, of Love Knitting, and one of the reasons I did that was because not everybody is has a, a stockist, a yarn stockist close to them. And even if you do have a yarn stockist, maybe your yarn store doesn't stock the yarn that you're looking for. Now, I am very fortunate. I have a lovely yarn store, a fabulous yarn store a, with a great owner. Not that, it's like a 30 minute drive away from me. It's far enough to make me think twice before I went because if it's too close, I'd be there too often. So I sort of like that it's a drive away but uh, she doesn't stock everything and she can't possibly stock everything. So um, sometimes I, I go to, to uh, Love Knitting, um, but I always do say, please shop with your yarn store, your local yarn store first. If, you'd, uh, if you're in Canada and you need a local yarn store that does great uh, mail order service, I'll link my, my local yarn store down below for you. And if you're, if none of those options are good for you, but you still want to, and you're anywhere actually in the world, Love Knitting sh ships everywhere. And so I have an affiliate link down below. So you have, you must be aware that if you order through that link, it, I get um, credit on my account. Hold on one second. Someone's leaving. There you go, Tala. So, so I just wanted to mention that so that you understand what the affiliate link means. One of the reasons why I'm knitting the uh, this Bondi Barton mashup hoodie is because I wanted a hoodie, but I I really um, 
don't want one of these microfiber fabric hoodies that everybody's got. Yes, this is a big investment. It's a lot of knitting. It's striped. I absolutely love it. I love the texture of it. It uh, will have to be washed and lay flat to dry. I don't mind doing that. And I've really, really enjoyed all the knitting on this. There is a lot of finishing. Pockets have to be sewn in. Button bands have to be picked up and knit down. Sleeves have to be set in. Notice my little clips here. These are fabulous. They're by Coco Knits. And you can clip your pieces together. It holds them and then while you're seaming, you know exactly where you are. The one thing about seaming stripes is it's great. You, um, it keeps you on track. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I do seams, like here, for example, this is the side seam. Isn't that, it's, it's almost perfect. But when I'm seaming a solid color garment, obviously I miss a roll or two here and there. And when you get to the top, you might have two or three stitches on one side more than on the other. So you have to do a lot of fudging or you rip back and, and uh, like with stripes, it's, it's perfect. It's easy to keep, uh, keep track of where you are. So I've done a little demo on uh, sewing up with stripes to show you. And I'll put that here. Here's my bondy sleeve, and I'm going to sew the underarm seam. Just before we start, when I do any sleeve, I always look at the cuff first and make sure that when you are sewing it up, you're going to be creating a perfect seam. And by that, I mean you look at the pattern and make sure that they, all good patterns and all rowing patterns will, will work that you have as in this case, a two by two rib. So there's two knit stitches here so that you're going to seam up between the first and second. Stitch on either side. So these sort of wonky edge stitches are going to be eaten up in the seam and these two nice rows of knit stitches will butt up together to create the seam. So I use a piece of yarn twice the length of my underarm seam. I've gently pressed this sleeve and I have used my Coco Knits uh, claw clips to hold it together. And you can see the, the stripes match and the clips are holding it together um, just to keep it in line and uh, hold it so that I'm not constantly fighting it wanting to open up. So here we go. So I'm going to come up from below between that edge stitch and that first uh, stitch in. And leave a tail and go to the other side and do the same thing. Come up from below between the edge stitch and that first stitch in. Now back to the right side, in where you came up, and go along and pick up two bars. So one, two bars. Go to the other side. Go in just above where you came out and pick up two bars. just above where you came out and pick up two bars. And you'll notice I'm leaving it rather loose at the moment. Two bars. Because holding this tail and pulling this the, the yarn you're working with, you end up with a nice seam. 
you do have a little slight um, dip there. You're going to use this tail to go from above down below and that will tidy up that, that edge. We'll do that at the end. But we're going to carry on and I'm just going to do to the top of this um, single color rib and then we'll look at seaming on the striped area. So I'll be right back. Okay, so my uh, thread has come fi finished up here on the right side and it's just at this first row of white of the two striped, um, the two row of white striping. So I'm going to go on the other side in the first row of white and up to the top of white. So there's two bumps there and you'll see one's white and one's blue. So I'm going to come back to the right hand side and there should be, so I'm going to come to the blue bump and I've got two blue bumps this time because I'm at the beginning of the two rows of blue. So I should have two blue bumps this side. No, nope. I should have a blue and a white bump on this side. And a white and a white. A white and a blue. A blue and a blue. A blue and a white. A white and a white. And you see what's happening here. On this side we're picking up evenly on each stripe and on this side we're offsetting by one row so that when they pull together And I like to hold my knitting and I can feel the yarn tightening up underneath. So when they pull together, you get this really nice seam where everything is matching up. God, those, those little bumps are really annoying me, but I am going to ignore them. So I'm carrying on. White and a blue. Blue and a blue. Blue and a white. White and white, see what I mean? Too even, too odd. And that right away will tell you if you've gone off track. Now, when your knitting is all one shade, of course, it's a lot easier to get uh, confused and, and to miss a row of stitching. So that's where the, um, I like the, these little clips come into play because they hold your stitching together. And if you were doing a whole seam and you got to here and you noticed you were run row off, you could adjust it right away instead of going up and finishing your whole seam and then finding out at the top that you are, that you're off. So I really like these little cocoa clips. Just got them um, last year when I was at the Needle Emporium retreat in the fall. I like my Coco uh, slap wrist keeper here because the needle clicks on it when I'm uh, it magnetically attaches to it when I'm not using it, which is perfect for when you are knitting and sewing up and you don't want to put your needle down. Sometimes you put your needle down, you can't find it. Well, I don't want to lose my needle because I have dogs, of course, 
and I don't want them to getting into my needle. So I love my little cocoa knits and uh, my cocoa knits accessories. Highly recommend them. Just a little uh, thought about the needles when you're sewing up. This silver needle might look large for this yarn. The yarn floats in the eye of the needle quite loosely. That's exactly what you want. The yarn fits in the eye of this needle, but when it's in there, it's actually rubbing on the edge of the needle. So I don't like that. That causes friction and that possibly could make the yarn break while you're tensioning it to tighten up the seam. I always play with the yarn and decide whether I'm going to use the yarn that I've knit with to do the seams or have to use, or maybe I'm going to have to figure out something else to, to sew up my project with. In this case, the yarn is fine for seaming and in this big eye, it's not getting any friction on it at all. So I'm coming up to the end. I'm, I'm still picking up two of the same color on the right hand side and alternating colors on the left. So I just picked up two white bars. So this should be a, a white blue, which it is, and then two blues, and then a blue white, two whites, white and then we're actually at the top so I'm going to go white and then I'm going to try and come up through the edge of the top white and then on this side I'm going to go in here and up through the top through the cast off cast off edge and tighten that and see how you get a nice straight edge at the top there's still um, threads from finishing off the sleeve when we, when we first started the sleeve shaping so I'm going to take the yarn that I'm sewing with, I'm going to go back through on this side, the left hand side, and then finish this, this piece of yarn by going down my seam. I'm going to leave that for now because I'm going to show you the seam, the way it looks now. And we're going to go down to the bottom and this is the yarn we started with. So you'll recall I went up from the bottom, up and up, so it's on the right hand side. I'm going to go up on the left hand side. One more time. It, it, it creates a figure eight at the bottom here to finish off the edge of the, uh, the ribbing. Snug it down and then go back down and through to the back and weave it in here. I'm going to weave it up on the actual seam. Now cotton uh, I find travels a bit even after you've uh, put a, a knot in it. So I am going to use a little bit of a, a trick that I, I don't know where I saw it, but I like it and I use it often. So I'll just show you that now. I'm just going to put one knot by going back through the loop and knotting it. And then I will just catch just 
running stitch or slip stitch or how, however you want to call it. When I finish my end off, I use this. It's a sewing uh, accessory. It's permanent fray check. It stops fraying of the edges. I've never actually used it for sewing, but I do use it for knitting. And I, uh, in particular, use it when I'm putting buttons on. I use fray check to seal the threads when I've sewn a button on. So I just put the tiniest little bit there on that knot and that will dry and you won't even see it and it, it holds it from moving back on itself. This this thread might come loose, I doubt it, but it, it might, um, but the fray check will stop it from, from unraveling. I ordered the buttons for this sweater from Textile Garden and I think they look really nice. They they actually make it look a little bit dressier, these nice metal buttons. I used the light color of Denim Revive to sew them on, it, so it makes it a, a, the buttons become a design detail. So when I sewed them on, I always use a backing button, and that makes it hold on to the fabric uh, nice and firmly. And when I finished, I don't know if you can see that, when I finished I just tie the yarn off and then I put a little drop of fray check on the knot to hold it. So I'm almost done. I've just got to sew in my sleeves and finish my hood. I've already done the I cord. Now when you read the instructions for I cord it's I think once you see how it works, it, it's fine. If you've never done I-cord, it might be a little bit confusing at first, so I'll put a little demonstration right in here about how to start and do your I-cord. Use double pointed needles, cast on three stitches. Take your ball of yarn behind your knitting. Over, I like to do it over top of my tail. Get that tail out of the way and slide those uh, stitches to the right hand side of the needle. Just drag your working yarn around the back, hold on to your tail, and knit those three stitches again. Slide them back, give the tail a little tug, and knit those three stitches again. It's a little fiddly at first, but very quickly you will start to see a little cord of three stitches developing on your needles. It's quite a bit of eye cord uh, needed to have um, a string around the hood of this hoodie, but I found I took it with me and if I had a few minutes I would just sit and do a few uh, eye cord rows, I guess you'd call them, and uh, it didn't take long at all before I had the whole cord finished. By dragging that yarn across the back, it just tightens up the whole thing and makes a circular little three-stitch piece of knitting. There you go.
So in my quest to uh, avoid plasticky type fibers and, and I'm, I'm looking for ways that I can help the environment. And one thing that I have been using for the last few years are dryer balls. Now, I don't know, are you, are you like me? When you put your socks in the dryer, do you put in like three pairs of socks? So six individual socks and only five come out? I don't know, same thing happens to me with dryer balls. I started with six white, off-white dryer balls and I'm down to three. And every once in a while that third one disappears but and then it shows up again a few days. I don't know where it goes, I have no idea. They were purchased dryer balls. They're starting to fall apart. And I thought, you know, I've got all this yarn in this house. I should do, I should make my own dryer balls. So I did some research on, of course, where else, YouTube, and came up with this uh, demonstration on how to make dryer balls. So I gave it a try. So for my dryer balls, I'm using Rowan Big Wool. It's 100% wool, beautiful, lightly, lightly spun yarn. And uh, so you just start off and you're making a ball. Keep winding. I weighed uh, the ones that I've already done anywhere from 25 to 30 grams of yarn makes a nice size dryer ball. So I came to a knot, so I decided that that was a good time to stop. And you need um, a needle with a large eye. And just take that end, and push the needle through the middle. And there you go. So you take make a few dryer balls and you take these and you put them in a nylon stocking and separate them, tie them like little sausages and tie them with non felting wool. Use a superwash wool or cotton to tie in between them. Put them in the washing machine, wash them on hot. I've got a, a front loading washing machine. I didn't put anything in with them because I was worried about the, the dyes transferring. So I didn't put anything with them. I just uh, put them in the washing machine, washed them on hot, put them, took them out, put them in the dryer, still in the in the in the their stocking sausage casings. Put them in the dryer on dry. I don't know why every time my uh, I guess it's too much talking, I, my throat gets dry. And when they came out of the dryer, I had to cut them out of their sausage casings because the nylon stockings themselves had almost felted into the outside of the dryer balls. This multicolored one is um, it's actual, actually a center of white, which you can see there, and the other yarns are put on the outside. Because I've discovered that the white big wool, and I gather a lot of white yarns, will not felt. And it's because of the bleaching process to get it white, it takes off the scales. So it's better to use colors, and I think these will brighten up my laundry room. So I'm going to make some more, and uh, I think I'll make about, maybe I'll start with six again. Maybe I might even go up to eight because if these ones disappear, they're really cute. They might disappear. I know every time I've gotten them out, Lackey has his eyes on them like, whoa, those are pretty balls, Mom. <laughs> so dryer balls.
put them, so when you've made your dryer balls, you put them in the dryer with your clothes. They bounce around, they keep your, your clothes separated. I sort of throw them in as I'm putting the clothes in, I put them in between. They bounce around, they keep your clothes uh, moving, separated. They also, because they're wool, they absorb moisture too. And I firmly believe that they help your clothes dry faster. It has to be a good thing. In the summer, I put things outside and I dry them outside. Um, I try to not wash everything every single time you wear it. That is sort of crazy. It's, a, it's something that we Westerners in particular have gotten used to doing because we have a washer and dryer and it's just easy. Wear it, throw it in the laundry hamper, wash it, put it back in the closet. You know, things can be worn a couple of times before they have to be washed. All my sweaters I wear and I actually don't wash them. Oh my God, she said she doesn't wash your sweaters. I have a steam setting in my dryer. And so there's a shelf that goes in. I put my sweater in there. I steam it. It, it freshens it or I hang it outside and let the wind and the air get at it. And it, it so it really, maybe, maybe once a year, I have to wash a sweater. Now, my linens in the summer, of course, I'm going to have to wash more often, but um, they're a quick hand wash in the, in the machine, put them on my, uh, my dryer outside, my drying stand, and they're dry. They're, it doesn't take long at all, so I don't mind them at all. But my woolen sweaters, they are lucky if they get washed once a year. I, uh, if, they, if they're getting a lot of rotation, they do get washed before they get put away for the season. But I, th I honestly think steaming is just as good as, uh, as hand washing. So dryer balls, make some, let me know what you think. Are you going to make some? Do you think they work? Have you, have you used what dryer balls before? Yeah. So it's not a, not a big update this month. As I said, I've been really busy with this, this Bondi Barton stripe thing. I'm going to uh, get it finished up and then I'm going to do some styling of it. There's a new uh, hashtag going on about uh, wearing your sweaters. Well, quite a few of us were doing that, styling our sweaters and showing them before that hashtag came up. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll use the hashtag though, but I will be doing a little photo shoot with my friend. Uh, being a striped sweater, it's going to make it a little bit different. The styling is going to be a little bit different. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I've got a few ideas in mind. Once I get my Bondi Barton hoodie mashup sweater finished, I'll be doing a styling photo shoot and uh, uh, I'll put that in next month's update. Might do it as, a, I don't know, maybe I should do it as a separate finished object video. What do you think? Would you prefer a finished object video or what do you think? Is it better to put it in my May update or is it better to do it as a finished object video? I've never done one of those. Anyway, so that's about it for me here at Life LDC for April. I hope the spring weather has come your way and look forward to talking to you at the end of May. By the end, by the next video, I will be one year older. Ah, time marches on, eh? We, all, we have to just be thankful that we're still here and we are still knitting. So until then, happy knitting everybody.